so let's talk about satellites so what is it so satellite you can define it to say it is just basically um, a machine that orbits a planet or star now I can give an example we can say that um, Earth is a satellite because it orbits the Sun okay you can also say moon is uh, a satellite because it orbits the earth so now if this is the earth here if i have this is the earth then i've got the moon so the moon is moving along the what eh? the earth so it orbits so this is the earth then we can say that this is a satellite okay so anything which orbits we can call it a satellite now what is happening here is that let me give you a clear picture of a satellite let's say we have f so i'll have this to be the f then i'll have the satellite here now this satellite we're going to say is the moon is moving around the circle just like that so this is my earth now remember this earth is going to have the radius so the radius of this earth from this point all the way to that point let's call it r1 okay then the satellite basically we don't consider the the radius of the satellite so i'm going to say again the radius from this point here all the way to the satellite there I'm going to call it R2. Now to find the R, the total R is the addition of R1 and R2. Okay. Now, as this satellite is moving around the circle, there is the force of gravity. We know that there is a force which makes this satellite to be moving around the circle, which you can say the centripetal force. Okay. But that force is the Fg now under satellite whenever we're talking about fg we're talking about the g then the m the mass of the earth and the mass of the satellite so i'm going to call the mass of the earth to say m1 the mass of the satellite to say m2 so i'll have m1 divided by m2 or times m2 divided by the r squared so this r which we're talking about is the radius from the center of the earth all the way to the satellite so that's uh that's the reason why i've said that the r is the addition of r1 plus r2 so this radius is from the center of the earth all the way to the satellite so that is the fg in this case fg is not equal to mg because we're talking about if you have got two objects so we have got the earth and the moon so these two guys there, the force that makes the satellite to be moving around the circle. In short, what is happening is that there is a force that the Earth is exiting on the Sun. And at the same time, there is a force that the satellite, which is the Moon, which is uh, that is exiting on the, what? the Earth. So we can say that the Fg will be the mass of the Moon, okay, which is M1, times the mass of the Sun divided by the r squared so r is the distance in between okay so that is the principle behind the fg now we can say that the summation of all the forces in this case since it is moving in x direction we can say that we have got only fg okay at this point we can clearly see that the object which is moving is the sun which is the satellite so i'm going to say According to Newton's second law, if an object is moving, there is acceleration, then we can say that it is mass times, so this mass we are talking about M2, so it is M2 times the acceleration. Now, in this case, since it is moving around the circle, it is the centripetal acceleration, is equal to Fg. Centripetal acceleration is V squared divided by R, so I'll say it is the mass 2 V squared divided by R. So that R is the same as I can say 
it is the r squared because it is the radius from from the satellite all the way to the center of the the center of the earth so this is going to be equal to fg is just basically g m1 times m2 divided by r squared at this point i can clearly see that i can cancel the m okay the m2 even here m2 i can also cancel one radius i can cancel another radius there so i'll remain with v squared to be equal to g m1 divided by r okay now if i want to find the velocity i can just get the square root i'll just square both sides so it's going to be g the mass of the earth divided by the radius so if i want to find how fast the the satellite is is moving i can use this formula now this is when i want to find the angular velocity what if i want to find the linear velocity i can do this i know that v is equal to wr i can replace this with wr so it's going to be wr since it is squared so i'm going to square both sides it's going to be g m1 divided by r now at this point i can say w squared times r squared is equal to g the mass of the earth which is m1 divided by the r i can cross multiply and i'm going to find this so i'll have to the power 3 now is equal to g the mass of the earth i divide both sides by r squared or r to the power 3 r to the power 3 now is this is going to give me this now i can square both sides or i can square root both sides so if i square root this side i square root this side i'll have my angular velocity to be the square root of g the mass of the earth divided by r to the power 3 so if i want to find the angular velocity i can use this formula if i want to find the linear velocity how fast the the satellite is moving i can use this formula v is equal to the square root of g the mass of the earth divided by the radius now what if we want to find the period if an object is moving around the circle remember this was our formula before we square root we had v squared which was equal to g m1 divided by the radius now if an object is moving around the circle then this is true v is equal to distance over time the distance in this case is the circumference of the circle so the circumference of the circle is basically 2 pi r the time it takes to move to to complete one cycle is the period so i'll say that the v will be equal to 2 pi r divided by the period now our goal is to find the period now from this formula here from this formula where there is v i can replace with the 2 pi r divided by t so i'll say 2 pi r divided by t everything is going to be squared i'm just replacing v squared with 2 pi r over t so i'll square it this is going to be equal to g m1 divided by r okay now from here i can clearly see that this is going to be 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared is equal to g m1 divided by r now i can cross multiply to make the period as a subject of formula okay so if i cross multiply here this is going to be g m1 then times t squared is equal to 4 by squared r times r squared times r is r to the power 3 i would divide both sides by g m1 then here g m1 now we can clearly see that if these two guys cancels we are going to have our t squared will be equal to 4 by squared r to the power 3 divided by g the mass of the earth now i can square root both sides or i can 
yes I can square both sides then I have t will be equal to the square root of um, 4 by squared r to the power 3 divided by what divided by g m1 so this is going to be the formula for finding the period now we have come up with um, three important formulas which we have to know the first one we have said it is starting from here v squared is equal to g the mass of the earth divided by the radius then again if I want to square root I'll have g m1 divided by this then to find the angular velocity we have said that um, we say that the angular velocity is going to be given by uh, g m1 then we divided it by r to the power 3 then we say that to find the period this is uh, 4 by squared r to the power 3 divided by g m m1 so these are the formulas which you need to be familiar with now I've got a question here which is saying a satellite orbit the earth is about um, 87 minutes if its orbital radius is 600 is 6500 kilometers use this data use this data to find the mass of the earth so they want us to find the mass of the earth now remember if this is the earth the, here is my satellite this satellite is moving around the earth remember the radius from the center of the earth all the way to this that is our r now in this case r is 6500 kilometers but what we have to remember is that we need to convert our our radius to meters so to convert from kilometers to meters I need to do times a 1000 okay so I'm going to say 6500 times a 1000 which is going to give me I can put it in scientific notation which is uh, meaning my radius now is 6.5 times 10 raised to the power 6 meters okay now we have been told that the g is 6.67 times 10 raised to the power 11 now remember we are going to call the mass of the earth to be m1 m2 to be this according to the information which i've given you we said that we are going to say that fg will be equal to the centripetal force so fg is g the mass of the earth the mass of the satellite divided by the radius squared this has to be equal to the centripetal force is the mass v squared divided by r at this point now the m which we're talking about here is the mass of the satellite which is 2 so i can cancel the m2 i can also cancel one radius so i'll have g m1 to be equal to v squared now remember we have got um we want to find the mass of uh, i can divide both sides by g even here by g so we have m1 is equal to v squared divided by g this is the formula which you have to use now we don't have the velocity but we have the period okay i can use this information to find the period to find the velocity remember we said that when an object is moving around the circle this formula is true so distance is just basically 2 pi r the circumference of the circle the time is the period our goal is to find the velocity so i'll say v will be equal to um i'll have 2 pi my radius is um 6.5 times 10 raised to the power 6 then i divide this by the period which is 87 minutes so i'll convert that into seconds so 87 times 60 
which is um, which is five thousand one hundred and sixty. Okay. So now my v will be equal to. I'll have two pi times six point five exponent 6 times 6.5 times 10 to the power 6 then I divide this by a 5160 so I'm getting my velocity to be 7914.865 meters per second now I can plug in the values to find my mass so I can clearly see that eh, m1 which is the mass of the earth is going to be v squared divided by the g okay now we can go ahead and say the velocity is um, the velocity is 79,000 is 7914.865 divided by g we have been told that is 6.67 times 10 raised to the power 11 so the mass of the earth is going to be um, 7914.865 divided by 6.67 times 10 to the power 11 negative 11 okay so I'm getting my mass to be 1.19 times 10 raised to the power 14 kgs so that is the mass of the earth so now if you want you can do this you can start from there and say since our formula from this point here we say that our m1 was equal to v squared divided by g and we know that v is 2 pi r here so I can say that m1 will be equal to uh, 2 by r divided by t then divided by g but this has to be squared okay so m1 will be equal to 4 by squared r squared divided by t squared then divided by g then now you can go ahead and say this is going to be the same as m1 to be equal to 4 by squared r squared divided by t squared then times the reciprocal of what you have down there 1 over g so the overall formula is going to be 4 by squared r squared divided by t squared times g now if you plug in the values here you are going to find the same answer okay so you can use this to find the mass of the earth times g so you can plug in the values you'll be able to find the same answer so that is it for satellites